Welcome to Money Nerds Channel. Today we are going to talk about how a group of MIT students won $8 million by hacking a lottery system and got away with it. Statistically, you're far more likely to be struck by lightning in your lifetime than win the lottery. So how did they do it? On Mondays and Thursdays, cash windfall was drawn. Six numbers from 1 to 46 were chosen. The jackpot started at $500,000 and was always paid in one lump sum. Lower tier prizes range from $4,000 to $150 to $5 for matching 5, 4, or 3 numbers. A cash windfall bet was won by 2 numbers. If the jackpot reaches $2 million, but is not won, it is rolled down and the secondary prizes are increased. It all began in January 2005, when James Harvey was about to begin his final semester at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Looking for an interesting independent study project for his final term, he considered comparing the lottery games, Powerball and Mega Millions, to see which was more beneficial to the player. He reviewed other lottery games for comparison, while researching Powerball and Mega Millions. That's when he discovered Cash Windfall and its unique roll-down feature. He calculated that it would only take approximately $100,000 in tickets to ensure success in the Cash Windfall game. The group calculated that they could win prizes by using probability and advanced mathematics. When the jackpot reached $2 million or more, group members bought in and split the winnings. If the jackpot in a lottery game is not won, it is usually rolled over and added to the next drawing, resulting in a larger jackpot. The cash windfall jackpot was set at $2 million. When no one matched all of the numbers, the jackpot was redistributed or rolled down, resulting in smaller prizes that were 5 to 10 times larger than usual. The odds of winning the jackpot were 1 in 9,366,819. But if you were clever, patient, and wealthy as three betting groups, there was a gap in the system to guarantee to win. According to the odds published on the lottery's website during the game, the odds of matching five of the six numbers were about 39,000 to one. It's still a long shot on a single $2 ticket, but it's doable if you buy in bulk. For example, no one won the jackpot on February 8, 2010, but $2,970,119 was paid out in lower tier prizes. This chart illustrates the possible winnings of someone who bought $200,002 tickets for $400,000 in total. So, as per the chart, if you bought 200,000 tickets, matching 5 out of 6 numbers had the standard probability of 1 in 39,028 to win $4,000. But on the February 8, 2010 draw, because of the roll-down price, that amount was $22,096. Statistically, from 200,000 tickets, there was a chance of 5 tickets winning this amount, totaling $110,480. As a result, they could have won a total of $425,640 from all of their tickets. Although the actual outcome may differ, this person has a 50% chance of winning $425,640 or more in cash prizes from this drawing. Buying enough lottery tickets proved extremely profitable if a roll-down payout could be triggered. Purchasing $600,000 in tickets virtually guaranteed a 15-20% to return on investment. The Massachusetts Inspector General issued a report in 2012 detailing how three syndicates cracked the state's cash windfall lottery game. As per the Inspector General's report on February 7, 2005 draw, Mr. Harvey and members of the MIT group bought 500 tickets at nearby retailers. One of those tickets matched four of the six winning numbers, paying $2,364. Together with some three out of six matches, Mr. Harvey's group had turned $1,000 into about $3,000. After this, members of the MIT group contributed additional funds to the pool. Mr. Harvey and his colleagues increased their ticket purchases as quickly as funds allowed, eventually purchasing 300,000 tickets for each roll-down drawing. Mr. Harvey stated that his calculations determined that purchasing approximately 300,000 tickets was the best strategy in general. He did, however, vary the number of tickets purchased for specific roll-downs based on a variety of factors, including the amount required to increase the jackpot to $2 million and estimates of how much other groups would bet. As long as the number sets were chosen in such a way that winning combinations were evenly distributed across the range of possible outcomes and as long as no one had, Mr. Harvey and his investors could be almost certain of a profit. I feel it is important to essentially apologize to the public because a game was created 
that allowed syndicates to gain special opportunities that others did not have, State Treasurer Steve Grossman told the paper. Grossman added, Revenues were tremendous and the lottery benefited, but there were practices that were not appropriate and things done that were not right. Despite lottery officials' repeated denials to the Boston Globe, Sullivan concluded that they knew the game was compromised as early as 2005, authorizing the sale of extra tickets and the installation of extra ticket machines at the specific stores frequented by the students. It was later revealed that the Massachusetts Lottery was aware that the students were involved in this scheme, but because it did not directly affect them, they did nothing about it for years. In fact, according to the Inspector General's report, officials allowed the group to buy hundreds of thousands of lottery tickets on purpose in order to increase revenue and make the lottery more successful. The game was eventually called off, but no one was prosecuted. I'm sure it was enjoyable while it lasted. That's it for today's video. Subscribe to Money Nerds to watch more cool stories like this. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.